Welcome back to Wit Acres. I'm getting a lot of planting done today, so I wanted to bring you along and give you a little update. I'm out here planting the J bed. I feel like I'm way behind on planting, so I'm trying to get all my spring crops out, like my cabbage and onions and broccoli, Brussels sprouts, artichoke, fennel. I'm putting all these in right now inside the J bed, which is named that because it's shaped like a J. That's the straight bed. I'm working on moving the straight bed over to this area and then I can fill it up with this pile of compost I have and get that planted out as well. But for now, I'm just putting in the uh, cabbage. I got Copenhagen market cabbage, Danish ball head cabbage. Intermixed in here is some bunched red onions. I'm, I'm just bunching them together so then I can pick them for salads and just smaller eating onions than having the full bulbing onion. Also in here is leeks. I have some leeks multi-sown together going through the inside of the cabbages and broccoli. And then I have some leeks here separated out. They don't look too good because I just put them in, but I put some singles in here so they can grow up a little bit bigger. I have an artichoke that I plugged in the corner just for a sacrificial plant because a lot of the aphids like artichoke. Plus if it does actually do any good, it will have some nice blooms down here. My Tulsa, uh, curled leaf lettuce is doing amazing. I just have it inside this just to I had nowhere else to put this. I bought this obelisk and uh, I wanted it somewhere and that lettuce was already volunteering there so I threw it on there and I don't know I think it looks pretty good. Just gives a little bit of structure. I also plugged in some French dwarf marigolds here. I have some broccoli coming up the side of the garlic there and then here starts the garlic this is all the garlic which has bugs all over it i don't know if you can see them there's tiny little black bugs all over my garlic and all through my bed here so i'm working on getting some diversity into here on this side i did plant a lot of onions together so that's really not diverse but i did plug in a couple fennel on this end another fennel with some ground cherries that are going to volunteer up here I pulled all the volunteers out of this bed before I filled it up so they didn't get buried. So I'm still going to, I think they're zucchinis. And I'm gonna be planting those out as well just to keep them alive and get some early squash out here. Even if I just feed them to the pigs and the chickens, at least I'll have some food out here and I'll be able to use it. I have some French dwarf marigolds plugged into the corners here for some color and just for uh, pulling away the bugs for some diversity down here. The high density raised bed is looking really good. We have the chard coming up here nice and thick together. This was a volunteer lettuce, that's why it's kind of oddly placed. And then we have the kale right behind it coming up. This bed could actually use some water. It's pretty dry. Lettuce behind that, uh, red romaine behind that. And then I believe we have the parsnips, beets, and then some radishes, bunching onions, and then the bearish spot down there is the carrots. I had a volunteer calendula that I wanted, uh, pulled out of the garden over where puppy is, and I plugged it into the raised bed here because the aphids do love going to that. And the calendula itself is sticky, and the aphids will actually get trapped on that, so it's a really good plant for the garden. In the other corner over there is just one tiny little Brussels sprout. I know I'm going pretty fast here and just showing you what's in. I'm not actually planting it because I feel like I am way behind this year. I feel like I have a lot in the greenhouse and it's already getting really hot outside. So I'm working on today and pretty much the rest of this week just getting as much as I can in the ground because we're supposed to be getting some days and nights with some rain so this is the best time I can to plant. It's, my plants are going to last a lot longer out here in the ground in the raised beds than they are in the greenhouse because in a few days it's going to be about 93 degrees and it's really hard to keep that greenhouse any type of cool or comfortable for the plants in that type of weather. So I'm trying to get everything I can out into the landscape and into the ground but some areas aren't ready so I'm just trying to plant what I can. Echo pups being a big help, aren't you, buddy? I got this new bird bath. I don't know if I showed it yet, but it's got a little pineapple on the bottom. I got it from Lowe's. I've been eyeing it up since last year and 
finally got it and it really just adds something down here in the garden i like having the shimmering water look down here which is just really nice we have the wild bell hyacinths that are popping up all in a ring around here just looking real good and the dianthus here in the front is kind of young everything in my garden's young so they're always small but this uh dianthus here and here and then there's one over there on the other side of the fence they're just coming into bloom once I get all this grass weed whacked down, I might even spray it. I'm not sure yet if I want to try and spray around the plants that I'm already putting in here, but it probably would be a good idea to kill off the grass before I come in with wood chips all through this area and create my walking paths. Down here are some chives from last year that are blooming. I just left them go. They can spread pretty bad if you leave them go to seed, but I wanted to watch them bloom. They do have a pretty little bloom on them. Also, I found a volunteer Chinese snowball bush over behind my compost pile. This was a volunteer from a plant that my dad got from my mom's mom's house. So yeah, long time ago, my dad pulled a plant from my mom's mom's house and planted it back behind the compost back here. And it is looking beautiful. It is in full bloom right now, but the problem is it's behind a lot of trees. So we don't actually see it from the house over there. It's kind of tucked back here in the corner. So you can see it on the road coming in, but uh, it's really nice that I found a volunteer that I can get out into the open landscape and we'll be able to actually appreciate it. And it actually has some fragrance too, which is nice. And all that wild phlox blooming in here just adds a lot of pretty color. And the rhododendrons are starting to come in. That means we'll be having a garden tour here soon. Right here is a gold rider Leland Cypress that I plugged in. Hopefully that'll do well and fill in this area a bit too. So I got the J bed planted. Now I'm going to just plug in some annuals that I have, some zinnias, all down this sun border garden row that I'm putting in. Poppy, you found a golf ball? Not entirely sure what I'm doing with this sun border row. All I did was plug in two artichokes because uh, artichokes like the sun. This is going to be a full sun border, about three feet wide, 100 feet long. So I'm going to plug in. I don't know, a few zinnias here, honestly, just to get some early color in and just to have something growing until I can plant out and plan and plant out the whole entire bed. But uh, right now I'm just going to get some zinnias in. Hey, little Robin. It is a busy time of year. I just wanted to do a little planting update so I'm not too far behind with everything that I'm putting out because there is hundreds and hundreds of plants that I started going out into this landscape in all different areas. I have about eight separate sub gardens here that I separate out to kind of have a little bit more understanding of what, what's going where, but there's a lot going out here into the landscape. Also back towards the house, I am getting the edging ready for around the pond and I want to try and get that side planted out. Oh, the dianthus is blooming. Oh, the lupin, you gotta go see that lupin. All right, I just plugged in, I think, eight of these zinnias, just kind of scattered down the line just for some early color. So I'm also trying to go around and get as many sunflower sown, direct sown as I can, because it's already middle of May, and I'm probably only going to get sunflowers for the fall now that I plant. So it's lucky that we are having some volunteer sunflowers coming up. Here's a little sunflower popping up here in the wood chips. I transplanted one volunteer into the J bed. And there's another little one in the wood chips here. Oh, I also put in some chamomile. That's what that is right there. I put it into a few places around here. I think two of them are inside the pollinator patch as well. There's one. So they're going to be good for the pollinators and they'll be a perennial. So they'll keep coming back. And if I ever want some chamomile tea, I'll have some. My trellis is not finished, so puppy just walks right through. But I am loving using my gate. I put the swing hinges on it so I can just walk through and it'll shut right behind me. I don't even have to latch it. I also just got this pen stem and put in. I think it looks beautiful here. It's a nice dark foliage compared to all the green that's in here. I have the hostas and the lilies and then the irises that are blooming real nice right now. They're all about to pop right, right <laughs> real soon. The spider wart is also about to bloom. So I need to come in here, I guess get Ooh, get some of the weeds out of here. All this chickweed is growing up along the edge 
need to get that pulled back but I'm going to plug in some I think snapdragons again I did uh, I do like the snapdragons over here and I'll fill it in with snapdragons and probably wave petunias again because I love the way the wave petunias carpet the whole mulchy area and I think it looks real good with the bright pop of pink or purple that I pick with the petunia against the uh, full green background. This pen stem should get bigger and fill in this spot a little bit better. It will get probably I think three to four feet at the top of the stalks whenever it's fully mature and it should be a perennial too here. I'm in zone 6a and this is all the way down to zone 5 so I'm happy with this purchase. It has a beautiful little bellflower and that's probably something that the hummingbirds will like which is always a good thing. I'm out here getting some compost in where I have my original holes. I already had these burned in last year down here in the vegetable garden. So I'm just putting some compost amendment right inside the hole and working it in so I can plant some of the volunteers that I dug out of the J-bed. And it's always nice to have the mockingbird up on the tree limb singing you songs while you're planting in the spring. I just planted these volunteers in here I got eight of them in they look to be little baby squashes they could also be cucumbers or pickles or yellow crookneck squash anything that I actually had out here planted last year and the birds and chipmunks moved them so uh, I just put them in it because it doesn't really matter what they are I'm just looking to get food for the animals the pigs possibly and the chickens so I'm not too worried about what they are. If there's something I don't want, I'll just pull them out whenever my zucchini and squash that I sowed seed the other night actually grows up. Once that's big enough, if I wanna put it in here, I can always just rip these plants out and put it in when it's ready. But since my plants aren't ready yet, I figured I'd throw these volunteers in and let them keep growing to get some early harvest if possible. Take advantage of what mother nature has given me it is going to rain tonight but i'm going to go ahead and water all these in with a hose just to make sure they get their nice deep water and settle all the soil around the roots we're probably only going to get a quarter inch tonight so that's not going to be enough to soak in the plants the way they need to be settled into the soil but it might be enough for my sunflower seeds to germinate so i'm going to walk around just in a bunch of places around the gardens and sow sunflower seeds Last year the deer ate about 80% of mine, so I didn't have a very good sunflower show, but I'm just going to sow as many as I can, and hopefully the deer won't eat them. I just got the flower bed here around the Royal Empress tree, mulched out with some compost, so I can see the irises a little better as they come into bloom, and the peonies in there that are putting on buds right now. So this will be a nice little colorful area in about a week, or maybe even this weekend when it goes up to 90 these iris buds might all open up and put on a little show. Puppy, why are you shutting your eyes? You tired. You want to play a little bit. You got your cousins here to play with. Your Remy girl up there. Hey Remy. What are you doing Remy girl? What are you doing Remy? Can't go in that way. How about that way? Maybe. <laughs> She'll figure out the fence. Oh, Remy, there's a gate. Nope, distracted. Zima, what are you doing, Zima? Remy, hey, Remy, you wiggle butt. Oh, I got, I got them all excited now, Gizmo. Here comes Ted. Hey, Ted. I was also able to find some... Uh, 
What is this? Creeping Jenny. Somehow I have some Creeping Jenny growing down here in the garden. I pulled out two plugs and they'll even separate out more and I have a bunch. I have a bunch over here. You can see it's bright yellow. I don't know how it got here or where it came from but I have a little patch of Creeping Jenny I'll be able to harvest from it for the pond and get it established over there. It's also good to know that it is a perennial here and we'll keep coming back. Whoa. What is living in there? Well, that's a deep hole. Echo. Come. Echo. Zook. There anything living in there, pup? Anything living in there? Zook. If anything's in there, he'll smell it. I don't think anything's using that hole yet this year. I'm gonna have to try and fill that hole. Yeah, that'll help. All right, dogs. You're not supposed to all be in my garden. Hey, come on, come on. Come on, everybody out of the garden. Come on. Let's go. Everybody out. Everybody out. No, no, Echo. Why are you going that way? You're confused, everybody. Come on. Through the gate. Oh, little ones. Figure it out, Gizmo. Figure it out, Gizmo. Oh, you got it. What about you, Ted? You stuck in the garden, buddy? What are you doing, Ted? Come on, Ted. Oh, he can fit through the trellis. You little Ted. As you can see in the greenhouse, we still have some plants that need to go out. I didn't even start with the annual dahlias, marigolds, or my tomatoes or peppers. I have some extras over here as well. And then I have a full flat of portulaca for the pond. I have Brussels sprouts still in here, Shasta Daisy and Gazania. You shut that fan down. We also have some Lupin back here, some more Gazania and Shasta Daisies. I have some of the tray over here of coneflower. We have some more dahlias, some butterfly weed that finally came up. I'm hoping to get this to perennialize here, just keep dropping seeds. Some more dahlias, calendula and zinnias in there as well. We got most of my onions out. I did do the multi sown like this and then I just break the clump apart and plant them. Works out great for the onions. I have a couple cabbages left that I just saved to put in the landscape in different places as ornamental cabbage. And then I still have all my herbs. I really would like to figure out a place for my perennial herb garden so I could just plant them and let them spread and get big and then I'll always have a place to go and get them. I have some pumpkins and squash in here, hopefully doing some germination. I also did some dwarf zinnias and they're coming up, starting to come up there. I don't have anything coming up on the squash yet, so a little bit longer on them. And then I have two trays over here of squash and gourds that I just sowed last night. So now you know why I'm feeling behind. I feel like there's a lot of plants in there that still need to go out into the landscape before it gets too hot for them to be in the containers. So I just want to do a little update. Let me know what you think. Hit that like button down below. If you want to follow along, subscribe down below and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I post a new video. You can see me and Echo on the next one. Thanks for watching.